Hey everybody, this is Destroyer doing his first audio commentary for WCReplays.com. This is audio commentary number 486 and it is copyright to WC Replays for 2007, so don't go stealing it. Today I've got installed for you an Undead vs. Night Elf audio commentary, so get the replay paused at the one minute mark from W.E. Rain's point of view, Fog of War off. And uh, we're going to delve into things fairly quickly. What I'm going to try and attempt to explain to the Undead players out there today is not how to go about doing a specific strategy or a specific playstyle, specific unit choices or anything like that, but instead how to make effective decisions in battle and also effective strategic decisions and macro-oriented play outside of battle to give you the most effective uh, metagame approach to defeating the Night Elf opponent. So what we're going to watch uh, in the following replay is the decisions W.E. Rain makes, and I'm going to try and explain to the Undead players listening why he makes those decisions, how they come about, how he goes about executing them, and what advantages he's seeking to gain by actually making those decisions. So uh, hopefully by now you've got the uh, replay paused at the one minute mark, but just before we delve into things, um, a little bit about myself. I'm an Australian uh, undead player, I've been playing Warcraft since 2003, and uh, I got into this audio commentary gig uh, over the last few months, oh, last month in fact, pardon me, I've been doing audio commentaries for the member audio section of the website. Um, I got a lot of good positive feedback, uh, so definitely check out the member audio section. There's a few of my audio commentaries there, and uh, audio commentaries from many other very talented ACers. Um, so you get a lot of good information there. And I was uh, lucky enough to get the uh, chance to trial audio commentate, so hopefully this goes well, and you'll be hearing more from me later on. So uh, one minute mark, W.E. Rain's point of view, uh, unpausing in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1... Um, pause. Uh, you'll see Rain's doing a fairly standard build that's uh, Crypt Altar Ziggurat with only one Acolyte additionally. He'll then build another Acolyte once he's got all of his buildings down. And then he'll build, and he's not actually going to build a sixth Acolyte to go scout, however. He's already doing something different. And this is where I wanted to talk about this uh, sort of metagame approach to your strategic options. He's playing around on the map Secret Valley, which is a one, which is a two-player map. So there's only one spawn where your opponent can be. It's also fairly well known that it's a very uh, uh, ancient of war creepable map. So what Rain's going to do, he's actually going to not build a sixth acolyte to creep, and he's instead going to get up a uh, the requisite amount of lumber to basically. Um, just cover his early game lumber expenses, and then he's going to send his first ghoul uh, down to actually pull the creeps onto the Ancient of War. And what he's going to do is uh, he's going to put down an early graveyard, which he's just doing now, just before two minutes. He's going to do a, basically a five ghoul tech with only a single ziggurat. Um, so as you can see, the um, ghoul's just come back, and he's already managed to cancel the Ancient of War down at um, Dead Man's base. And... What he's effectively done is stopped all that early game creeping power that the uh, Night Elf had. The other thing I want to discuss is, when you scout your opponent's base, it's very important that you uh, see what level of construction their Ancient of Elders is at. If the Ancient of Elders is only half finished when your scout gets to their base, they're doing a uh, Tavern Hero build. So you have to immediately go, well, I'm going to be against a Dark Ranger or a Beastmaster. If the Alt Ancient of Eldars is already fully complete, you're against the Demon Hunter. And that's going to affect how you then play your game later on. So as you can see, uh, Rain is bringing in the Death Knight to harass the Beastmaster. You want to harass a Beastmaster or a Dark Ranger, so basically a Tavern Hero build, because they can creep much more powerfully than you can. Uh, so slowing down their creeping, stealing their creeps, and basically forcing them to waste time and keep their hero levels low is a uh, is is a very important objective simply because the DPS of these heroes is is quite insane. We all know that say a beastmaster with level two quill beasts can do an extremely disgusting amount of damage to a gargoyle army. Against a demon hunter, however, you're probably better off creeping, uh, just to get that level two aura with the coil, which gives you a lot of uh, flexibility against these early game archers. Uh, if you look at Rain's base, he's already halfway through his tech to tier 2. That's how quick this um, one ziggurat tech is. And uh, he's also put down his second crypt. Uh, he's only just got his shop coming down now, and he's getting his second ziggurat. So he's teched extremely fast. His tech is uh, well ahead of dead man's. And uh, as you can see, he's still just harassing. 
what you're going to see Rain do this entire game is basically try and contain Dead Man. He's not going to expand himself, and he's not going to force any real battles until he feels the game is distinctly in his advantage. Instead, what he's going to do is just slow Dead Man down. He's not letting him creep. Dead Man's actually yet to finish a creep camp yet. Um, and we're just over four minutes into the game. Uh, so he's just finished his first creep camp, and uh, Rain's still hot on his tail. He's still yet to do anything else. Um, so the what you're going to see in this game is just a lot of pressure applied constantly throughout the game, and a lot of uh, strategic decision making. Uh, just coming up now, you're going to see the Beastmaster go and uh, creep some more while the Death Knight's going to give him a little bit of breathing space just to do some health regen, uh, mostly because if you look back at Rain's base, he's actually now going to do split ghoul creeping, which is very important. The, uh, the focus really is, if you can slow your opponent's creeping down with your Death Knight while creeping with your ghoul army at the same time, it will allow you to at least keep equal with experience, uh, and should your harassing go well and you can get some uh, death coil steals on creeps, perhaps even uh, draw ahead in experience on your heroes. So he's going to go and do that split ghoul creeping uh, right now, um, and basically he's going to start producing gargoyles and harass. I've seen in the forums recently many players saying, oh, you know, when should I use gargoyles? And some forum posts are saying, oh, you don't use gargoyles against the Dark Ranger or against a Beastmaster because they, oh, because of their summons, uh, it's just not as effective. I don't think that's the right way to think about it, honestly. Um, from what I've observed in my own matches and watching pro-level replays is that um, gargoyles are more of a map-dependent choice. If you feel that the uh, map is uh, beneficial for gargoyles, for example... The reason Gargoyles are very good on Secret Valley is, um, as you're about to see, if you watch Rain now, he's about to creep out this, this health fountain. The reason Gargoyles are effective on this map are they allow you to creep out these red drakes, and Rain's about to now power level his Death Knight to uh, a much higher level than Dead Man's heroes by taking out both fountain creeps, um, both level 6 uh, red dragon drakes, which gives him an absolute gargantuan amount of experience and a massive early game advantage, as well as some good item drops. Um, Scourge Bone Chimes, always a win. The other things to think about why Gargoyles are good in this map is firstly, um, there aren't a lot of expo points, and also expansions can be easily scouted with Gargoyles on this map. There are also a lot of trees, which mean that um, Gargoyles give you a huge mobility advantage, and uh, due to the location of the starting base spawns, it's actually very easy to harass a Night Elves' uh, Wood Wisps. So all of these advantages add together to make the Gargoyle strategies much more playable on this map. Um, Dead Man's basically going to, uh, as I said, he's going to creep the other fountain and just keep producing gargoyles. He's also um, he's basically just not trying to let Dead Man put up an expansion. Um, he's not trying to fight him, however, either. The idea very much is he's going to contain his opponent. He's not going to let him expand. He's going to just uh, just keep even with him and just try and keep things productive. So he's uh, just creeping out the second fountain, and um, as you can see, the Death Knight's already level three and a half. He's going off to scout for those expansions, not to uh, you know, not let get not let Dead Man get them up. Um, if you look back at Rain's base, he's still producing more gargoyles. He's gone very quick tier three. He's just finishing it now, at about seven minutes thirty. And the reason for that quick tier three is that given he's only going to forty food and then teching, which is really all you need to do against the knight up if you're trying to contain, because you don't need a fifty food army to actually fight with. Uh, he wants those tier three upgrades, namely, uh, you know. Uh, uh,